let's talk about EV charging adapters. This is a point of confusion for a lot of more novice EV drivers who are just getting into driving electric cars. They might not know what kind of adapters they need. I see, I've seen a lot of people buy adapters and having to return them because they're not buying the right ones. Today I have four of the most common ones you're going to see out there and I'll show you how to use them and when to use them. To take a step back of like why you even need adapters in the first place, here in North America, US and Canada, it's a bit of a messy port situation. Cars that are Teslas have something that is called a Tesla port or a NAX port. This is a North American charging standard port. Eventually all cars are going to be like this, but for now, uh, there's actually, from non-Tesla cars, we have something called, let me show you on this Hyundai. This top section here is called the J1772 port. This is for level 2 and level 1 slow charging or destination charging or home charging. But then there is the, the secondary pins right here. These big ones are for DC fast charging at a charging station. So the, in this combined piece here, both of those pieces, that is called the Combined Charging System or CCS. So basically we have Tesla NAX and we have CCS right there. Uh, so let me show you some adapters. Like uh, First of all, let's start with a Tesla. When you get a Tesla, you're likely to get something like this with your car. This allows you to use non-Tesla level 2 chargers or the, the same J1772 uh, plugs. So they look like this. This is for slow charging. And then this just pairs to the adapter. And now you can charge your Tesla on level two or destination uh, using this adapter. You could think the use case might be like some parking lots or some like street side chargers. They're typically like six to seven kilowatts. Uh, this allows you to basically charge on that infrastructure or if you have a home charger with J1772 You will use a J1772 to NAX adapter. This is not for fast charging For fast charging a Tesla on a CCS charger, you would use something like this. This is a CCS to NAX adapter um, That timed out. I'll open that again later, but why would you need this? Most of the time, if you're a Tesla driver, you're probably going to go to a Tesla supercharger station. They're everywhere, they're priced really well, and they, they just work and they're very reliable. But there's still a lot of other non-Tesla charging stations, uh, like Electrify America, EVgo. Here in Canada, we have Electrify Canada and the IV network. Most of them have still CCS, because there's a lot of other CCS cars out there. So if you're a Tesla driver, you can get an, a CCS to NAX adapter. You will have more charging options. So you have both of these in your car and you can pretty much charge anywhere. So to use one of these, you basically stick the NAX port here, and then you can connect a CCS charging station here. But one thing I should note is that not all Tesla cars are compatible pretty much any car made after 2021, 2022 is going to be CCS capable. And you can check in the screen under additional vehicle information. If your specific car is CCS capable, then you can, you can go to like a Electrify America station and just plug in and charge. You will just have to do the activation through your app. It's not going to be like a seamless experience, like at a supercharger where you just plug in and you get built. So this is the Tesla side. Um, and by the way, I should mention that some cars, even if they're not CCS capable, the capability can be retrofitted through the Tesla service center on some of the like mid age cars, some of the oldest model S and X, they're not, they're not compatible, but some most modern Teslas can use CCS chargers with an adapter like this. Now let's move on to our CCS Hyundai over here. This is a 2025. Hyundai Kona Electric. Um, it, this one still comes with a CCS port. Some of the other Hyundais are actually going to be coming on with this port this year. That's going to make charging at a supercharger station a lot easier. Uh, but more on that in a second. So let's talk about level two slow charging, the Hyundai. 
So there's still a lot of destination chargers out there at hotels that use the NAX port. Um, or there's, there are a lot of home charging stations like the one I have behind me. That is a Tesla charging station. So with an adapter like this one here, this, is, this has a NAX input and a J1772 output. So I can just plug this in and then this Tesla level two home charger becomes a J1772 charger compatible with the Hyundai. So then this part just pops into the top here and now this becomes a NAX capable car. And then there's a release mechanism to get it out. So the reason to have this is of course there are hotels and uh, parking lots that have uh, Tesla destination chargers or maybe you're going over to a friend's house who has a Tesla. If you have one of these you could charge your uh, CCS car with one of these. These are very inexpensive and they're highly recommended. The other adapter that I would recommend for a CCS car owner is this one. This is These are becoming more popular. This one is from a company called Lens. Uh, they make a lot, they make most of these adapters you're seeing here. Um, I, I like their stuff. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, but I've been using their adapters for some time. This is a new product. It's 500 volts and 500 amps capable. Um, and this allows you to connect a CCS card to a supercharger for, for charging your Hyundai, in this case, at a supercharger. Um, not every single supercharger station out there is available to non-Teslas yet. More are coming online. Uh, you would basically just get the Tesla app and inside the app, you don't have to have a Tesla car to get the app. Uh, you could find the nearest superchargers on your route or where you live, and you could see if they're compatible with non-Teslas. Uh, there are a few in our area, and I've tried them with this car and with this adapter. So what happens is, again, there is a there is a release buttons for the adapter and for the NAX connector. So then this fits snugly here and then you would plug in the supercharger to these pins here and you would activate the charging session from the Tesla app. In the future, it's a snug fit but that's good. In the future, many EVs will have the ability for plug-in charge at supercharger stations so you would have a similar experience as arriving with a Tesla because this car you just plug in at a supercharger station and they already have your billing information. You just walk away and it starts charging. For now, non-Teslas, they will still need to use the app. You will find the number of your charger, like it'll be like a letter in the number, like 4D, and you initiate the charging session from the app. So this is a really big deal because um, the infrastructure for CCS cars is still lagging behind the infrastructure that was built up by Tesla with a supercharger. So by having the option to go to a supercharger station, it basically opens up your possibilities vastly. So like I said before, uh, one thing I should mention is that the pricing tier is different at a supercharger station. So typically Tesla owners will have cheaper pricing than non-Tesla owners. But it, the convenience is so good that like, I think it makes sense for a lot of people to make stops there on their road trips. So like I said in the beginning, if you are a Tesla, if you're a Tesla driver, then this combination, if you have these in your trunk, will basically allow you to charge anywhere. You can go to Tesla stations, you could go to non-Tesla stations, you can always get a charge. And then These two allow you allow your CCS or J1772 car to charge anywhere. Um, this one again is for slow charging because it only has the J1772 connectors. This one is for fast charging because it has these two large pins. The DC fast charging happens through these pins while these smaller ones are for slow charging. And uh, yeah, this is a new product from Lens. Um, I've tried it out with this car. It seems to work really well. Um, there, there are a lot of kind of sketchy um, 
NACs to CCS adapters out there, so watch out. Uh, but this one seems to be well built, it's got some heft to it, and it has safety certifications. This has been a look at uh, the world of EV charging adapters. Hopefully it's been helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.